Jeez Louise, it's bloody awful out here. It's been raining all day. The river's on the rise. It must be time for an autumn barbel. I'm going to try and catch one tomorrow morning. Blech. Right, before I get going, I'll show you how I check the river levels. Go to Google EA River Levels, click on this one, and that will take you through to this next page here. And then in that box there, just tap in whatever town or you need. Set that up. Uh, this is what we got and then that will show all the measuring stations around your river So we're going to check right upstream up at Lingfield This uh, pumping station or this metering station is a bit dodgy That's why the gaps in it but look there's a load of rain in there Loads of it right now let's go downstream a bit Here we go down in Edenbridge town so yeah, get used to what is normal level. That's normal level for the summer. There's some boards that they keep in to hide the shopping trolleys. They're taking them out. And the water's just starting to come up. So that is going to be a bit higher later because there's obviously water upstream of it. I'll go down one more. Yeah, see, that's just coming up steady. That's Heaver Lake slowing it down. Let's check where we're going to fish. Here we go. So yeah, there's not a lot going on down there. So there's a glug of water upstream. So I would have thought by tomorrow, it's just starting to rise. By late tomorrow, it'll be probably, probably be falling. So you can fish anywhere up to here. This line here is when the water's in the fields. So you can fish above that line, but it's, yes, yeah, hard work. So yeah, anywhere in there, you can fish. Well, I do anyway. <laughs> Nothing's going to stop me go fishing. Right, it's the next day. The weather's settled. It's calmed down. I'm going to go online and have a look, see what the river's doing, and hopefully go this afternoon. But before we go, we'll have a look at the river levels. There's Eden Bridge. Oh, yeah, it's just starting to drop down there. Just peaked. Handy to know. Falling river's always a bit safer than a rising river. Let's check the main bit. Oh, no. Let's go up here. Oh, yeah, look. Coming down loads. Where is it? No, not that one. That one. Let's see where we're actually going. There we go. Oh, it's still still on the up, but should be fine. And here we are. Let's see what the river looks like. It's good to me. Let's fish. So we've made it down to the river. It's a right funny sort of day. I'm going to do an overnight, uh, rightly or wrongly. I'm probably going to get soaked, but uh, I just really want to catch a double. I thought I got over it last season, but I haven't. I still want to catch a double. So the river's falling. Very important if you're going to do an overnight, uh, make sure the river's falling. I've checked right upstream up to um, Lingfield. It's going down. It hasn't rained all day, so it's definitely going down. You don't want to be fishing if it's rising overnight. You could end up in a load of water in some trouble. So it's probably got three foot on it. We're going to give it a go. Cracking little fish. First cast, just setting up the other rod. Only about, mm, might go a pound, but he absolutely shot off on a prawn. I've not caught one on a prawn down here before. That's very encouraging. Lovely. So yeah, first cast, caught this lovely little barbel. Just been resting in the net. Here he is. He's only about 12 ounces, maybe a pound. Oh, come here little mate. <laughs> He's struggling to get him. But yeah, absolute beauty. Look at that. 
Well chuffed. Put you back. Oh. Go and tell your mama, pawns for tea. I think we might have a good evening. So yeah, something I was saying earlier about on the website thing, when it becomes easier to fish as the river comes up, this swim, when it's low water, the flow comes right in here. When it's really high water, it goes in that one and it leaves a nice slack down here under this arch. So um, it's not that hard to find swims when the river's up. You just have less options. You can fish in smooth water, I've never done it that much, but uh, I like to find little slacks and creases and just drop it in. You don't need big leads then, albeit at the moment I am fishing right in the middle of the flow with a big four ounce lead, but I'm not going to do that for very long. I'm going to give it five more minutes here and then move. Right, we've made it into my second swim. I haven't fished this swim when it's flooded. Normally you fish sit down there. And there's a bit of a slack down there. I'm going to just touch ledger just down there. Not quite sure where the reeds are. It's one of the worst things about the first flood. There's still a lot of weed everywhere. Um, it's nice when it's going down and you've just got, just got the, you can just see where all the reeds are. So when it's carrying about a foot, you can just see where all the reeds are and just fish on the edge of them. So we'll give this 20 minutes. I need to get set up in my preferred spot before it's dark. I'm hoping we might see a barn owl. I've seen a barn owl down here before. Anyway, I want to get fishing. Something I'd like to do, just give a shout out to any new subscribers. Just like to give a shout out to Josh Bendekai, Power Fishing. He's a YouTube channel uh, out in America. So if any of you are interested in any of that, check him out and thanks for subscribing. If you want to give a shout out, click the subscribe button down there. Look at this little beauty, He's climbing up this dock to get out of the floods. Isn't he pretty? It's all right, mate, floods are going down. Oh, look at this. Bloody lovely. Not even in a rod vest. Not too optimistic about catching something. I've got to go to a meeting. <laughs> got to go to two meetings now. Anyway. You can't catch them if you're not fishing for them. Right, we made it to my spot. Uh, unfortunately, it is a bit full. I've sometimes fished behind the fence, which is there's a fence to keep the cattle away. Part of um, part of the Eden revival stuff to keep cattle to stop uh, water erosion of the banks from the cattle. Anyway, I know there's some steps down there, so uh, we'll just have a feel about gingerly. But it's quite a long way to the water's edge, which might cause a few problems when it comes to hooking a beastie. Let's get set up. Something I've been messing about with, which I haven't done before, is long hook lengths. On the left hand rod I've got a four and a half, five foot tail from the lead. Just wondering whether these barb will back off a little bit. The other one I've just got like a 15, 18 inch. I'm not sure it makes that much of a difference, but loads of people do it. So um, thousands of people can't be wrong. But that doesn't mean you should follow the, follow the tribe. Anyway, I've got a prawn on the right rod. Lump of meat on the left rod, just chucked a few cubes of meat. Not going to do an overnighter, just going to fish into dark. Bad boy slug. I am, um, I'm tempted to chuck him on the hook. What do you reckon? Give him a go. I was looking for a slug the other night. I was fishing a chub spot into dark. Could I find a slug? No chance. Excuse the picture, I haven't bought any of my tripod stuff. It was worth a go. I thought it was a purple. It was a bit of an effort to get out, but it was a chub. So, uh, well chuffed. I'll get him out. 
I had to get him moving Wade is a bit it's a bit improvised I'll just pick him out right where is he come here mate oh yeah brilliant oh it's all right isn't it oh chunky little chub hour and a half fishing always worth a go down the river the fish they don't go anywhere they're still in there back here you go mate off you go see ya tell Bertie come and find me oh the water's a bit cold I think I might get wet in a minute there's a few showers about um some beautiful blue skies but there's a big shower a big dirty rain cloud coming over I have my head up might reel in and go and get my brolly <laughs> I was hoping I wouldn't need it we don't want to get wet, do we? Mm -mm. Oh, just had a knock on that iron rod. It's a great little spot, this is. There's a sweeping bend and the, the willow tree sticking out there. So it pushes all the water around the other side. Makes a lovely big slack in this area. But when the water comes up a bit more, the water starts to come through in front of you. It's a nice, nice spot. Normally when it's this high, I fish it later on in the year, the reeds are dead. You can fish over the top of that right hand rod, just twitching a bit. It's one with a prawn. Little twitches in this sort of conditions you have to ignore because there's loads of um, reeds and stuff floating down the river. I have not yet had a barbel bite that isn't a three foot twitch. Oh, the barnet, there's the barnet. Let's see if we can get him. Where is he? Oh, he's over there, right over there. Bugger. He was quick. I admire wildlife photographers. I was talking to this guy on British bird watching about catching a picture of a kingfisher. He'd got some fantastic Sean Donnelly on British bird watching. Thank you for your comments, Sean. He um he was what was he doing? He was setting up ooh, <laughs> my tripod's breaking. I need to replace it. Um oh, steady. He was um putting a perch out in the water. Had to have 360 of water and just setting up in a bivy and photographing them. Had some fantastic photos. I'll try and sh show you some pictures. I'm sure you'll agree, these photos are absolutely stunning. Look at this. Take some patience to catch that shot. All right, everybody, I think I'm going to call it a day. I've had enough. I'm getting a bit cold. It's about half past eight. Can't be bothered to stick it out anymore. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, click the thumbs up button and uh, subscribe down there. I promise you, I will catch a double figure barbel out of this river sooner or later. It's just going to happen. Just you wait and see. Oh. Not tonight though. <laughs> See you next time. Like and subscribe. That's my tea. <laughs>